Hey there, dear web community, Vasily here with a new video. Today we are going to be talking about an amazing new feature we just released, modular contracts. They are going to change the way we deploy and develop our contracts because they allow us to add or remove custom functionality to our existing projects at any time. So in today's video, I'm going to explain you first what modular contracts are and how they work. Then I'm going to show you how you can deploy your own core contract using Tierweb Dashboard. Next, I'm going to show you how you can create your own module contract from scratch. And finally, we are going to implement that module contract with custom functionalities in top of the core contract we just deployed. So I hope you are ready because we are just getting started. So what are modular contracts? Modular Contracts is a new framework that enables the creation of highly customizable and upgradable smart contracts without compromising the ease of use and security of building with their web. Modular Contracts have two main components. First, the core contract, which is the base contract that serves as the foundation of the modular contract. You can think about it as the base contract with the basic functionality. And then we have the modular contracts. The modular contracts are installed on top of the core contract and adds more functionality or enhances existing functionality on the core contract. You can think of model contracts as they were Lego bricks. You have a base Lego brick that serves as the foundation or the core contract, and then you have a small Lego bricks or the modular contracts that you can add on top of the core contract. What's interesting about this is that you can interchange these modules adding custom functionalities or changing existing ones at any moment. So how a modular contract can provide additional functionality to a core contract? Well, when you install a module in top of a core contract, the module is going to provide the core contract with callback and fallback functions. These functions can be used through delegate calls on the core contract. The fallback functions are independent functions that can be called from the core contract, and the callback functions are dependent functions that must be used within the context of the core contract. The callback functions enhances the existing functionality of the core contract by adding new logic to their existing functions, executing additional logic before or after the core contract logic. As you know, if you want to build using Lego blocks, each brick must fit perfectly together with each other in order for the piece to work. The exact same happens with modular contracts. Each modular contract must fit perfectly together with the core contract in order for them to work. There are two main things that determine the compatibility between a modular contract and a core contract, and they are the callback functions and the interfaces. So for example, if the modular contract has a callback function that the core contract does not support or is already implemented, then they are not going to be compatible as you are going to see later on the video. And of course, the interface must be compatible. It wouldn't make sense to add a modular contract made for a ERC-20 contract in top of a ERC-721 contract. That's why the interface of the modular contract must be 100% compatible with the core contract. With that said, let me show you how you can deploy your own core contract and we are going to address that compatibility issues and you are going to learn how that callback and fallback function works as well. So let's get to it. This now was I'm going to show you how you can deploy your own modular contracts with just few steps. So here I am on the main tier web page. Let's click on get started and this will require me to sign in. Remember, we support more than 350 wallets compatible with the EBM or you can sign in using a traditional method such as a Google account. Just take in mind that this is going to create a wallet for you if you select this method. In this case, I'm going to be using MetaMask for this tutorial. Let's sign in the transaction. Let's log in. And once this is done, this is going to show me this interface. We need to go to the deploy section over here. And this is going to show me the list of all the contracts I already deployed. I created a base ERC721 contract for testing, but let's create one from scratch. So let's click on deploy contract. This is going to show me all the available projects we can use. But what's interesting for you on this tutorial is this section over here for modular contracts beta. 
For this tutorial, I'm going to be deploying a modular NFT drop. So let's click it. And basically what this is going to do is deploy a ERC721 base contract. So we are going to be creating a core ERC721 contract. And on top of this one, we are going to start adding functionalities. And if you take a look on the function specification for this contract, you are going to see that we have two interesting functions, the install model function and the uninstall model function. These two functions are going to allow you to add or remove functionalities to your project whenever you want. Let's click on deploy now and let's get started with this. I'm just going to fill up this with mock information. I also used an image I generated using AI and here we have more information. For example, the owner by default is going to select the same wallet address you use to sign in who is going to receive the funds when this collection is sold. And as you can see here, we have a new section called royalties. This royalty section is actually a module. This royalty section will transform your base ERC721 contract in a ERC721-C as we explained on this video that is appearing on the screen right now. I'm not going to be using this module for this video, but I highly recommend you to watch that one. Finally, we have the deploy options. As this is a tutorial, I'm going to be using the Cefolia test network. Let's click on deploy now. This is going to trigger a transaction on my MetaMask. Let's confirm this. And this is going to trigger another transaction to add my smart contract to our dashboard. Let's wait a little bit until this process finishes. And once this is done, we can click on view contract and this is going to lead us to the dashboard. This dashboard is going to be really useful for you because here you are going to find tons of information of your project, including all the analytics, what are the latest events and a lot more if you check on the left side. What's important for you in this video is this new section called modules. Here is the place you are going to be able to add or remove functionality to your modular contracts. And as I said before, this Royalty ERC721 is a module that will allow you to enforce on-chain royalties. But I'm not going to be using this functionality for this tutorial, so removing a module is as easy as clicking on Remove, click on Uninstall. This, of course, is going to trigger a transaction. We need to confirm. Basically, it's using that Remove module function I showed you before. And once the transaction finishes, the module is no longer appearing here. Adding new modules is also easy. We just need to select first the publisher address. I can use the web publisher address. So let's copy this, paste it over here. This is going to automatically list all the available modules. Of course, if you select a module like Mintable ERC20 on an NFT project, this is not going to work. As you can see, it's not compatible. So you just need to select a compatible module and you can add it to your contract as new functionality. And at this point, you can just keep using TierWeb as Publisher, select one of the pre-deployed modular contracts we have created for you and start adding functionality to your NFT project. However, what is actually interesting and powerful about modular contracts is that you can become a publisher yourself. You can create custom modules for any of the core projects and add any functionality you'd like. So for those of you as smart contract developers, here is when things get interesting. So keep watching because I'm going to show you how you can create, deploy, and use your own custom modular contract in top of this ERC721. So as you can see for now on our modular ERC721 project, we have this claimable functionality that allow me to send this project to my community and for them to claim it. But what if I don't want this to be claimable, but instead I want the people to pay upfront and have a base fee for this NFT project. Let's create then a costume model to address this exactly. So I'm going to start here on my terminal on an empty folder. I'm going to say npx tier web create contract. This is going to use the tier web CLI and it's going to require me to install the dependencies. Let's hit on enter and let's wait until this process finishes. Once the dependencies are installed, this is going to ask me what's going to be the name of the project. I'm going to say tier web modular contracts. Let's hit enter. It's going to tell me which framework I want to use. 
we currently support Hard Hat and Foundry. I'm going to use Foundry for this tutorial. And it's asking me what's the name of this new module or this new smart contract I'm going to be creating. In this case, I'm going to select price mint because I want people to be able to mint the token, but with a price beforehand. Let's click on enter. I'm going to use the empty contract for now, and this is going to create the project for me. Remember that for using this using Foundry, you need to have installed Foundry on your system. The new project is already created, so let me open this and let's open Visual Studio Code over here. So here we are on the main Foundry project and this creates me a base contract .so. I'm not going to be using this so I can safely delete this and let's create a new contract. As I said, this is going to be named pricedmint.so. On the description of this video, you are going to find a link to a GitHub. I'm going to leave you the smart contract I'm going to be using for this tutorial. I'm going to copy and paste it over here and I'm going to explain you how this code works. Let me just make this easy to be seen on the screen. So first thing first, as you can see, we have two imports that are giving us problem right now. First, the core module from the modular contracts and then before mean callback ERC721. Remember, I explained you how the callback and fallback functions are used on these modular contracts at the beginning of this video. So you just need to go to the tier web documentation and here on create module contract, you are going to find the dependencies we are going to be using. In this case, we need to install this modular contracts.git. So let's copy this. Let's go back to my terminal and paste it over here. Let me clear this and paste it on the terminal. As you can see, this is giving me an error because as this is a Foundry project, this is trying to automatically commit the changes and this tends to be problematic for Foundry projects. So what I can do is use the exact same command, but use the no commit command line here. So let's hit enter and this is going to install those dependencies. Let's wait a second until this finishes. Once all the dependencies are installed for this Foundry project, we can continue. Let's let me clear my terminal and then we need to add all of these dependencies to the remappings. So we can go back to the documentation and copy and paste this command, forge remappings and create a new remappings.txt. You're going to notice though that the terminal is going to tell you that this remappings.txt is getting deprecated and on the future, please be sure you add this to your foundry.toml configuration. So for that, I'm just going to use this forge config dash dash fix in order to avoid any potential problems. Once this is done, I can safely go back to my Visual Studio code, close this and open it again. And as you can see here, the problem for the imports are already solved. Okay, as that import problem is solved, we can continue. Remember, as I said, you can take this code from the description below, but I want to actually delete all of this and explain you how you would implement this yourself manually. So as you can see, the only thing I'm going to leave here is the mint price, how much money or how much either the user is going to pay for minting this, and then we can get started. As you can see, this price mint contract is giving me an error because as I'm importing both for module and before mint callback contract, is asking me to do something here in the code in order for this to work. Let's get started with before mint callback ERC721. Remember that callback functions are dependent functions that must be called within the context of a core contract, in this case, the ERC721. These functions are going to be used to enhance the core contract's functionality by executing additional logic either before or after the main core contract. So basically on top of the base ERC721, we are going to add a new functionality, which is going to decide what happens before the user mint the ERC721. So if we open this import contract, you are going to see that this function actually just reverts. So this is expecting us to implement this ourselves. So basically I'm going to do exactly that. As you can see, this function requires an address, a token ID, an amount, and the data we are going to be sending. So let's create that function. I'm going to be sending the exact same things they require me, the address, the token ID, the quantity, and the data. Of course, we are going to be using override as we are adding new functionality to this function that for now just reverse itself. And here I'm going to say, okay, 
For the user to be able to mint this smart contract, I want them to pay a price. So I'm going to add a require statement over here that will require that the message.value is equal to the mint price multiplied by the quantity of the NFTs the user wants to mint. And this is it. This is the new functionality I want to add to the base ERC721 contract. So in terms of the functionality, this is the only thing I need to do. However, the compiler is still mad at me because we haven't implemented the module requirements. So I have created the new functionality I wanted. Let's address that module. If we open the module.sol, you're going to see that this as well just has one function, get module config. That is a function that we need to implement and this function as well uses something called a module config if we take a look about what this module config is we are going to discover that this is a struct that requires this information and as you can see here we have that callback functions and fallback functions depending on the functionality we are going to use fallback functions are independent that we can called directly from the modular contract without any context from the core contract and the callback functions that, as I said, are 100% dependent on the core contract. We need to also specify which are the supported and required interfaces. In this case, of course, is for the base contracts, the ERC-20, the ERC-721 or the ERC-1155. And we need to set up a register installation callback. So we need to specify the parts of this module config inside our module contract in order for this to be able to work. Same as we did before, we need to take the existing function, in this case, get module config and override it with new functionality. So let's do that. As you can see here, we called module config as config. So let's first create a callback function array. So I'm going to say, config.callback functions equal to callback functions and we create a new array with the length of one because in this case we are just adding one new functionality to this module. So once I have this callback function array, I can say, okay, on the position zero, in this case config.callback functions, again on the position zero, so now I can add to this array a new callback function. I'm going to create a new callback function and here I just need to pass the selector of the function. In this case, I need to pass the selector to this before mint ERC721. So I'm going to say this dot before mint ERC721 dot selector. And then I'm going to set up the required and supported interfaces. So basically for creating the required interfaces, I'm going to create again a new array of bytes for, for the required interfaces. Remember, this is because the module config struct requires an array for each one of these. And on this new array of required interfaces, I'm going to say, okay, on that required interfaces on the position zero, let me add this interface, 0x80ac58cb. And if you are wondering why I'm using this hexadecimal code and how I know that this corresponds to a ERC721, well, you can go directly to the EAP specification for the non-fungible token or the EAP165. And here you are going to find that the identifier for this ERC165 is exactly this one I just used. So. I just take the identifier on hexadecimal code and I use it on my project. And this is it. We don't need to do anything else because this module doesn't have fallback functions and we are going to be using the default value for register installation callback. So we can safely deploy this to our dashboard. For doing that, let me get back to my terminal. And first thing first, we need to compile this project. So MPX web build. This is going to allow us to compile the smart contract and ensure us that nothing is going wrong over here. As you can see, the compilation was successful and now we can safely deploy this. And technically we can deploy this using Foundry with Forge, Script and 
create your our own deployment script to deploy this to any blockchain we want, we have ClearWeb and ClearWeb makes our life way easier to doing so. And of course, we don't want just to deploy this smart contract, but also publish it because if we publish it, it's going to appear on our ClearWeb dashboard and that will allow us to use it on top of the core ERC721 contract we created on the last section. So for that, we need to use the ClearWeb API key. So on your ClearWeb dashboard, you are going to find the section for generating a new API key. I'm going to link this on the description as well. And if you don't have an API key yet, you can just click on create API key, set a new name. You can set up the allowed domains. As this is a tutorial, I'm going to select any domain, but please mind the security on who you allow to access to this API key. And then you can click on create. This is going to generate for you a new API key. And please do not share that API key with anyone because anyone with that API key is going to have access to your dashboard and your project. So in order for me to publish that smart contract using that API key, I'm just going to go back to my terminal and I can say npx tier web publish dash k. And here you have to paste your API key. As you can see here, my terminal is already auto-completing this. So I'm going to use this API key. But again, remember, please do not share this with anyone. I'm going to hit enter. And what it's going to do is going to ask me which contract I want to publish. In this case, I want to publish priced mint contract. Let's hit on enter. This is going to open a new web tab for me. And in this new tab, I'm going to have powerful resources for me to use. First, I can upload an image. I can set up the contract name, the description of the contract. I can write a readme. This is in markdown format, and I can preview that. For example, if I say amazing module and hit on review, this is going to be automatically formatted on markdown. I can provide some resources such as the docs or the usage guides for this module I'm creating. I can set up the version I'm deploying and the release notes. If this smart contract has been audited, I can link the audit report for anyone interested. And then we have this option. In this case, I'm going to select direct deploy because users will directly deploy the full contract. Let's hit on next. Let's select the network I'm going to be using. In this case, I'm going to be using Cephalia, but remember that we support a bunch of EBM compatible blockchains. So you can select anyone on the list and let's click on publish contract. And as you saw, using this publish functionality from the CLI allow me to add a lot of interesting custom information. This of course is going to trigger a new transaction. Let's click on confirm and let's wait until the transaction goes by. Once the process is finished, you are going to see an interface similar to what we saw before when we were deploying the base ERC721 contract with the function specification. And as you know, this module only have the before mint ERC721 functionality we created. And we can start deploying new instances of this module. But you know that what we want to do is add this new module we just deployed to our existing ERC721 contract. So let's click here on contracts. This is going to give me the list of all my deployed contracts. Let's click on modular ERC721. Let's go back to the module section. And here I want to add that new module I just created. So as I'm the publisher, because this is the wallet address I used to deploy that, I'm going to copy the wallet address, paste it over here. And as you can see here, the price mean module we just created is going to automatically appear on the list. So I can select this and this is not going to work. I'm going to challenge you to hit pause to the video now and discover yourself why this is not working. But for those of you who want the straightforward solution, let me explain why this module is not working. As I said before, the claimable ERC721 module was already added to this project. And this is a problem. The reason is because if we take a look to the claimable ERC721.sol, you are going to see that here we are going to have 
another before mint ERC721 function. So basically, our module cannot be installed because it's going to directly conflict with this claimable ERC721. And makes a lot of sense, right? If a contract is claimable, then it makes no sense for it to be priced before minting. So in order for me to be able to add this new module price mint I created, I need of course to first remove the claimable ERC721 module. So let's click on the trash can, click on uninstall. You know, this is going to trigger a new transaction. Let's confirm this. And once this is done, you can see that that error message disappears because there are no more conflicts. This before mint ERC721 function is no longer part of this project, so I can add a module that modifies that function. I can select the version. In my case, it appears two versions, but the only reason is because I was making tests before creating this video. Probably for you, it's going to just be one version. I recommend you to select latest anyway, because this is going to be the most up-to-date version. And let's click on install. Again, this is going to trigger a transaction. Let's click on confirm. Let's wait until this process finishes. And as you can see now, that new priced mean module we just created now appears on my modular ERC21 dashboard. As you can see, here I'm going to have the information of the publisher. In this case, it's going to be my wallet address. And now if anyone wants to mint a new NFT of this collection, they are going to pay a fee thanks to this module. This was amazing, isn't it? Now you can start adding and removing functionalities as you please. As you evolve, your project is going to evolve with you and the requirements are going to be different. And thanks to modular contracts, now you can address that new requirements at any time. And the biggest advantage of this is that your users are going to interact with the exact same contract address as they did on day one. And you also saw how easy it was to publish that module contract using Tier Web CLI. And using the dashboard, you saw how easy it was to add or remove new modules from your contracts. And even though we covered a lot on this video, we just touched the surface of modular contracts. If you are interested, interested on more content on modular contracts, don't forget to let us know on the comments below, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel for more coding tutorials. That was it for today's tutorial, and I'll see you on the next video. See ya!